Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, March 2, 2015. You're looking at a daily chart of the SPY, and we had another update today. And, you know, let's go backtrack just for a second to put where we are in perspective. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we were in the on-time week for a weekly cycle top, which is always plus or minus one week. The plus one week was last week, and it didn't happen. So basically, we have light volume in the markets. We blew through the weekly cycle top, and I'm just going to go to a longer-term picture for a second because I think this is important also. Um, a monthly chart, you'll notice that what we did last month, okay, closing out February, we put in a up here. We put in a new monthly closing high, which would basically be, um, in my book, a breakout. Okay, so we have a breakout, um, a monthly breakout. We blew through the weekly uh, cycle top. And what does that tell you? It tells you that the longer time frame, right, the monthly cycle is stronger than the weekly cycle and even inside of it when it sh the market should have topped out it didn't so the bottom line is is that the market what i'm trying to say and, and getting to the point is the market has a very heavy bullish undertone to it and it's pulling the market higher so where do we go from here in terms of higher okay well um as long as we stay above now the new number right now is uh, 2111 on the S&P E mini. So I'm going to flip over to that for a second. Okay, we'll go we'll go back and forth. We'll flip over to the S&P E mini, and I'm going to go um, to the daily chart. And today we finished um, at no that yeah this is the uh, this is the after hours quote is two two eleven. I'm sorry, 2113.75. We finished at 2114. I think we finished at 2114.50, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that um, we have on the next target higher about 10 points to go in the S&P E mini, which would put us at about 2123.2124, .21 okay? And that coincides, and this is why I wanted to jump around a second. Um, let me go to the uh, S&P, SPY. What does that coincide with, okay? A number we've been talking about for quite a while. That coincides with the high from this spike day here on the 18th of uh, December, which was 212.97. 212.97 is the high in the SPY, and that is about $1 higher, roughly, in the SPY, which coincides with 10 points higher in the SP. Uh, pardon me, the ES E mini contract, the S and P E mini, which right now is trading right around 2114, 10 points puts us at 2124. See how those numbers coincide. There is one more number above that. Should we spike higher on this move, which is 2130 to 2135. 2135 is really the upside target, but it could be anywhere in that neighborhood. And, um, and that is still possible on this move. Now, we are certainly overbought in the market. Um, this market really does need to pull back. But at the same time, just because we believe that the market needs to pull back for all the reasons it typically pulls back, we don't know when it's going to pull back in a condition like this. We're in a very bullish state. Okay, yes, the market is overbought. Yes, it shouldn't be this high according to a lot of the data that we can look at to support a case why the market should be lower. All that doesn't matter. What matters is the market is going higher. You don't fight the trend. The trend is your friend until the market gives us a signal that it's topping out, at least for the short term, you have to go with the upside bias because we're in a bullish tone, okay? If we were to spike up tomorrow, finish on the lows on high volume, uh, that's a different story, okay? Or any day for that matter, that's a different story. That changes the tone of the market. But we haven't seen that, so until something like that takes place, you have to have a bullish undertone thinking to the market. So what you want to do is you want to buy 
uh, pullbacks of stocks that are coming into support areas and things like that. You don't have to buy the index. The index isn't necessarily your best bet to buy. Why? Because the index is very, very tricky to trade. Stocks move um, up and down on their own. Certainly, they go in the same direction generally as the uh, S&P, as the spider. But all in all, intraday or even for multiple days at a time, stocks don't have to exactly trade with the S&P 500. So anyway, the point is, is that the S&P is tricky to trade. So are the other indexes. But nevertheless, the NASDAQ put in a 5,000 print today, 5,008 it finished. And that was basically the, the concept behind why this market had to float higher. And we talked about this before. The NASDAQ... Um, 5,000 was basically the magnet of the NASDAQ. And what was interesting was, um, I want to talk about Apple because I almost forgot. Um, basically, while Apple was up slightly today, okay, Apple didn't really power forward as the NASDAQ powered through 5,000. And you would expect the largest company by market cap um, and, and by all accounts, uh, the most loved stock on Wall Street didn't follow the NASDAQ to a, a really good day. In other words, Apple was only up like a third of a percent today. The NASDAQ was up, um, I think, about three quarters of a percent. And um, no, pardon me, the NASDAQ was up nine tenths of a percent. So Apple should have been up more than the NASDAQ on a day like today. If the NASDAQ was really that strong, if there was real buying pressure under the NASDAQ, they would have been buying Apple as well, and they weren't. So to me, that's a little bit of a tell. We're going to watch that. Apple's kind of melting away since it hit that print up here at 133 and change or something like that, 133.60. Uh, it's been pulling back a little bit, uh, but we'll see. If the market has any kind of sell uh you know, program hit it and we have a little bit of downside pressure for a few days, Apple's certainly going to come in with the market. But right now, we'll take it one day at a time. I thought I'd just make mention of that little tell. I thought it was important. Let's run through some of the other markets here. Uh, let's go over to the gold market and uh, we'll take a look at uh, GLD. It was down slightly today, but no big deal. Um, we're still trying to put in a bottom here. So, I have some numbers, and I'm actually going to use the uh, gold futures numbers because that's where I do my calculations on. So here's the deal. We spiked up today and hit 1223 on the nose, okay? And remember that downside target of 1190? Okay, that, that could be a range, but I have a little bit of a narrower range, just slightly narrower than that. And here it is, okay? This week, okay, the market will remain in a standstill if we trade in this narrow range, obviously. Um, but between 1200 and 1223, so what I'm saying is that if we can close above, and when I say close, I mean begin hourly and then a daily close above 1223, and then certainly the weekly close, that puts the market in a very, very bullish, bullish position. If we can't, Okay, and we begin to melt down to 1200 and we close below 1200 on the same conditions, meaning hourly and then daily. That puts the gold market in somewhat of a weaker position, uh, specifically this week. And if we close the week below 1200, uh, there's, there could be a little bit further downside, uh, even beyond the 1190 that we saw last week in the gold market. So I wanted to make mention of that. Just be aware that those are the numbers I'm looking at and I'll keep updating you each and every night. Uh, as those numbers change or if they change. Okay, so let's go over to uh, crude oil and um, let's take a look at, um, this is the actual April contract. And what we had today, and it, what's interesting is, remember that 4970 number? You know, I'm going to look at intraday with you because the 4970 number is still important in my mind, even though the time has passed where that number is actually um, in my mind or in my work, uh, an important number in terms of pivoting around it for the week, um, that no longer exists uh, in my work. However, you'll notice that once the market got above that number, which is right here, okay, it spiked up and then it came back down, pierced through it again, and then went above it and now is trading above it. So um, it still seems to be important, only here are the numbers in crude oil. It's very interesting. We could have a two-way trade this week in crude oil, and here it is. Um, 
if crude oil closes above 51 hourly, begins to close above 51, and then it closes above 51 on a daily basis, if this move hasn't already happened, it's going to go up most likely to about 53.50. Okay, now if it goes up to 53.50, maybe 54 on the outside. I think it fails there because later in the week, I believe that crude oil will be right back down to about, let's say, between $50 and $50 and uh, 40, 50 cents. Okay, call it 50 and a quarter, roughly, give or take. Um, so, so if we do get a spike up early in the week or to the middle part of the week in crude up to the 53 and a half or 54 area, um, I think you can short that with both hands for a move back down to 50, 25, 50, 50, something like that. Um, you certainly wouldn't ride all of it all the way down. You take some off on the way. But, um, if that trade should set up like that this week, above 51, up to 53 and a half, and then a round tripper back down to 50 and a half, 50, 25. That could be a really, really nice trade, two way trade this week. Um, what else do I have? Let's talk a little bit about uh, the bond market. I'll bring up TLT because TLT um, kind of played our daily top perfectly from last week. If you remember, okay, let's bring up the daily. If you remember up here, first down here, I told you go, uh, TLT was going to bounce. Okay, and then up here, I said it was going to put in a daily top, and here we are, right back down. Now, I'm not ready to buy in here yet, but uh, I want to see if this low holds. And if this low doesn't hold, you know where our next level is, right? Our next level still remains 124 and a quarter. So I'm not too concerned right now um, about this level holding, because if it doesn't, I'm going to be buying at 124 and a quarter. So... That's where we stand, but right now there's no trade because um, I w I'd like to see it come down a little more and test this double bottom and see how it reacts. And if it goes through it, I know where I'm buying it. So it's kind of mapping out the trade ahead of time. Um, okay, folks, I think that's about it for tonight. Hopefully it's been helpful. I'm David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.